Please be ready for a dictation of transcription number 516 and 517 from Sir Kalachandra Magazine. Five seconds. Start. Sir, the Honorable Minister read out the whole list of schemes which the government had been introducing, like the Rural Works Scheme, crash programs, half a million jobs scheme, and the whole plethora of schemes. But he has deliberately concealed the most important thing, namely. Despite all these efforts by the government, unemployment has been continuously rising ever since the first five-year plan. If in the beginning of the first five-year plan, unemployment totaled 33 lakhs, now it is anywhere near 400 lakhs plus 30 percent of the population. who are in a state of disguised unemployment unemployment problem is continuously getting aggravated despite all the crash programs despite all the rural works programs that have been undertaken so far i am tempted to say this because the honorable minister has deliberately used the details of the various schemes of the government only to conceal the main point that the government has utterly failed to solve the problem of unemployment whatever they have done has been a drop in the ocean and the unemployment problem continues to be aggravated you may be putting a few crores of rupees here and there in the name of solving unemployment problem but in fact whatever money you have put in the unemployment schemes has been frittered away by private hungry contractors and political workers of the ruling party at the local level they have been misusing the funds rather than creating assets i would like the honorable minister for example to tell the house out of the total investments you have made for the crash programs for the rural works programs how much percentage of the total outlay has been spent on reproduc- reproducible assets government will not be able to give the figures because like the figures for unemployment government refuses to collect figures regarding reproducible assets how much of the total outlay for employment schemes has been spent on reproducible assets creating employment of a permanent nature in fact a large proportion of the money has been spent on investments which create only temporary jobs and the man days that have been added to the total employment figures are only temporary in nature even if they are real mr vice chairman sir the honorable minister said that the proposal of the mover of this bill namely in case government is unable to provide employment it is duty bound to pay unemployment allowance cannot be accepted the main reason put forward by the honorable minister is that investment should be used in productive schemes and not for giving doles that was one of his arguments he said that because of the resource position the government could not utilize their limited resources for unemployment allowance because the implications would be too large large amounts of money will be needed for such a scheme he also said in his characteristic fashion that if unemployment allowance is given 
it will add to the inflationary pressure. I fail to understand his logic because unemployment allowance can add to inflationary pressure only in a situation where such resources have been created by deficit financing or in a situation where unemployment allowance is given without commensurate development activity. It is true that in a period of inflation, in a period of economic stagnation, as we are having today, any disbursement of money from deficit financing will add to inflation. The mover of the motion or anybody else did not demand such an allowance to be distributed. We demand that while the economic crisis should be solved by changing the economic policies of the government, the government is duty bound to give unemployment allowance in case the government fails to provide gainful employment to the people, particularly the working people. The Honorable Minister spent a lot of time in enumerating the steps that government have taken. For example, the Bhagwati Committee's interim report was submitted earlier an inter-ministerial group report was submitted and the final report was submitted in May 1993. Then another inter-ministerial group was formed by the Planning Commission. They deliberated and submitted a report after a number of years. Interim reports, final reports, inter-ministerial groups reports and reports galore but no action. Why is that despite the Dantawala committee's recommendations, concrete figures have not been collected regarding unemployment? Because the government knows that if the practice of making estimate of our unemployment which was there till the end of the third plan was continued, people would rise in revolt because this government is incapable of providing gainful employment. Plan after plan, year after year, the additional labor force coming to the labor market has been much larger than the additional employment generated by all the crash programs and special programs taken together. Let the minister have the courage to contradict me. Is the minister prepared to assert that the new jobs created every year are equal to or more than the additional labor force? He would not be able to say that. Mr. Deputy Chairman, Sir, before beginning my speech on the budget, I would like to associate myself with the other gentlemen without holding any speculation in condemning the incident which was referred to earlier. Everybody here, I am sure, will join with me that political violence is not the thing to be thought of and it is a very condemnable one. And I associate myself with the views expressed by my other friends on both sides of the house. So far as the budget is concerned, as the economic survey has indicated, the year 1994-95 was a year of unprecedented economic straining in the history of independent India. Again, sir, if you look at the economic survey, we find that the growth either in industrial or agricultural 
or export sector has not been a very encouraging one. Sir, the Honourable Finance Minister, while trying to frame the budget, had to consider the economic crisis faced by the country. Stop.